already I can tell these are a little bit a little bit harder to get in here for sure those are half the length of those other ones it's not as hard to get in these in here is what uh, getting them in the actual drum itself it's not as hard as what I thought it'd be the long ones at least I have to use tweezers on these because they keep sticking to my hands so Basically all I did is just coat my fingers into some of this Vaseline and just wipe it around inside this little gear here and they're sticking to it pretty good. Now once I get this first front row in, I'll uh, put the little spacer ring in the back and push them all up flush and take my finger and wipe some more around them. What? So they'll uh, stick better.
well. After about three hours, mostly a full bag of pretzels, some caffeine, and a lot of tedious work. Gears are back in and they're turning freely and awesome. They don't sound horrible. There's no metal shavings flying anywhere. It already looks way better than it did when we pulled it out. So we still have a lot more to go on this, but that was by far, I'm sure, the hardest part. Um, each one of those little gears has all of those bearings. And it was. Each one of those little gears has all those bearings. And it was quite the pain to put them in there. Um, we did discover that we used Vaseline to help stick the bearings. And as the room we're in warmed up, it's about 8 degrees outside right now where we're at in Oklahoma. So we're in a warm barn. But as the room warmed up, they started falling out on us because that Vaseline began to melt and lose its um, stickiness. So we started setting stuff outside and getting it chilled back off. And it made it a lot easier. These are our dummy shafts we built. The, uh, like I said earlier, we took the original shafts, which look like this. Cut them down with the chop saw and grinded them smooth. Our long one wound up being 2.03. Short one, 0.97. And that short one especially has a pretty, pretty small tolerance. It needs to be right in there, or else you're not going to get those small gears in there because there's just not enough room to work. We put the tabs back in place. Um, before we put it back in the boat, we're going to make sure that we get some Loctite or something. But this right here is the entire reason that we had to do this. This little tab right there failed. So about a 50 cent piece of metal cost quite a bit of money and time and everything else. But the transmission is now essentially new. Rebuilt, and we'll be on our way in no time. We did order a new gear case assembly. Um, we, couldn't get the old one turned down. We, we couldn't get the old one turned down easily. I'm sure if you absolutely had to, you might be able to find a machine shop willing to do it. There's our old one, and man, it really looks bad now. Um, all those gouges and everything else, we kind of assume when we pull this out, oh, this needs to be shiny and smooth, and it really doesn't. It needs to have almost this rough, like a rotor on a car, texture to it so that that uh, reverse band assembly will grab. So there's the new and the old, but like I said, this little tab broke, causing one of these bearings, or one of these pinion shafts to back out, releasing bearings. They went all over the transmission. They laid on this thing underneath. That's what each one of these gouges is from. So it's, it's a wonder we were talking. It's a wonder that that pinion shaft didn't come all the way out and release the gears and then truly all hell would have broke loose. So thankfully that didn't happen. So we'll get back with you when we start putting the rest.